Good afternoon. Sorry for the late start here. It's good to see all of you here today. Yesterday we had a session on uh, name giving and adoptions. And I feel that with events going on lately, this can lead into this session here on how one becomes a clan leader, a clan leader, a clan leader's role. There's different names. I hear some people say chief. Uh, is Irene in here, Irene Dundas? We had a clan conference down there one time and they, down there they did the chief entrance song, which I think is a Simpson song. Partly. And the clan leaders came in on that, the chiefs. And the boy, you want to start a fight in the north, do that song up there. Because uh, where these boundary lines cross over and stop with the house master, the Hitsate, the head of the clan, the Nashu Honey or Nashate Honey, Kashate Honey, the other clan leader, the Slingit clan, the big man. Recently, in, in the past years, I've heard people talk about how they elected this person, their chief, with 90% of the vote. Uh, I don't think Clinkett is really a democracy to where you can do that. None of these men here were elected. They were placed in these positions, born into these positions. It's in their bloodlines. Do we have any other clan leaders from the... Who are the men that are here from the interior that are clan leaders? Can you come up here and sit up here with them? The I am going to ask one thing. I was asked a little bit ago about this comment about there's too many white people speaking at this conference. Hmm, I don't know. This came up in our planning sessions. And they have had answers, answers, had had questions and answers and comments in other sessions. But for this session, I am going to insist that you, if you are not Clinkett, do not comment or ask any questions of this system. This is none of your business. That's all I can say about it. So if you're an anthropologist or if you're an adopted person, I'm not going to entertain your questions. This is for Clinkets. This is a Clinket clan conference sharing our knowledge. Okay? Yekwe? All right. Thank you. When I was growing up in Sitka, I lived two doors, two houses away from my grandparents. My grandfather's name was Mark Jacob Sr. Kashkoi. Thank you. My grandmother, Skoshken. I spent a lot of time down there. I think I was fortunate to grow up so close to them. My dad's brothers lived there too, Ernie and Harvey. And I was always fascinated with the comments of the killer whale house, the beaver house, the raven house, the end of the trail house, pictures in a mind of a little kid of these huge houses and what they were. It wasn't until 19, January 1980 that I actually got to go to Angoon and see these houses and start talking with the people who were the caretakers of these houses that, shall I say, reached back into time immemorial. And I started learning family trees. 
And that was something that I really got me interested. I had done a little bit, but when I did Andy Hope's family tree, this was recorded by an anthropologist in the 1930s in Sitka. This is one of Andy Hope's family trees that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven generations on it, which probably goes back into the early 1700s. But I have a couple family trees that go back probably into the 1500s. These trees are important in determining your lineage. We use these in our NAGPRA claims as well, showing how families are connected. To the objects that we're claiming and also who the clan leaders are. We don't make up clan leaders out of thin air. We don't make up house masters out of thin air and just grab anybody and push them into those positions. And these positions are not open to adopted people. An adopted person can never be a clan leader, a clan mother, a house master. We're born into these positions. They're born into these positions. I'll say that again. Did I already say I'm not a clan leader? I hope so, because I'm not. I take care of my clan's hat, and that's it. Our clan leader lives here in town, but he's not here today. I don't know where to start off with. I think I'll start off with Edwell John, who took over my father's position a couple of years ago. And we're going to wind up with him, too, and you'll see why in a when we're winding up with him. But I'll turn this over to Edwell John. His clinket name is Tliakit. Here's another thing with names. Housemaster names. Clan leader names. It's awkward when they're given to a newborn right away and these names aren't available to be passed on, suddenly there's a newborn with it and a housemaster with it. Or an adopted person winding up with a big name that only a housemaster should have, or a clan leader. Big names that have a lot of history to them. Like Cleakit is one of the names that Edwell carries, as it was his great-grandfather and also my dad's brother. I heard someone in Sitka say the name comes from because they didn't want to join us and wanted to be a separate group. That was another clan speaking. I think, man, if you don't know the history, don't make it up because it's going to be recorded. My dad's family, my dad's house and the other house had their own house masters and lineages and the fight was over the dagger that was in my dad's house. And another group wanted to control it. They couldn't control my dad's house. They couldn't control the house next to him. So they built a house further away from the other two killer well houses. And they kept making deriding comments about Kliakit, Hasawa, those killer wells over there. So that insult to the other two houses became a big name in the two houses. That's where the name came from. So if you hear another story about that name coming out of Sitka, forget it. I know my dad's history. Okay? I don't like things being made up. I'm not going to make up things for you. I've, how many of you read the book De La Guna on the Clinket? There's a picture in there of a man wearing a Chilkat shirt, and it says a man wearing a bison shirt. And somebody in Sitka came to me and said, did you know there was a bison crest? I said, no, there wasn't. Yeah, there was. I saw it in the book. I said, that's a cow. When they were building the house, they didn't have the doorway finished, and they covered it with cow hides. And one of the men in the house made the comment, we should just call this the cow house. And the name of the cow house stuck, and they made a Chilkat shirt with that on there. 
But here's this anthropologist. I'm going to knock an anthropologist here today, okay? <laughs> Who said, it's probably the bison, probably coming from interior times in their migrations. She didn't ask anybody. She just made suppositions and then recorded it in a book. And now because it's in a book, people read that and say, well, this is what it says here. Why should we believe you? This was the same anthropologist that when she was asked about the beaver prow canoe figure from Angoon, this beaver prow was on the only canoe that survived the bombardment of Angoon in 1882. And I heard this story too from when I was a little boy. And that canoe prow was found 10 years ago when we were in New York in the American Museum of Natural History. He brought it out. My dad told the history of it again, told the names connected to it, told what happened told how the canoe was destroyed from wave action and they cremated it like it was a human being. My great grandfather John Paul had it. So someone called this anthropologist and asked her about that, if she had heard about it when she was in Angoon. She spent three months there and she said, well, I never heard that story when I was there. They must have just made it up. So how does that get written? I could go on and on here, but I wanted these guys to speak, some of them because they're house masters, clan leaders, people who were born into these positions. Some of you know the name Kawaii from the Juno area, from the Dog Salmon clan, and Bob Sam is from that family sitting on the end down here. So I'll turn this, I'll be commenting throughout this, and I'm going to turn this over to Edwell John. His other name is Wuchkadaha. Wuchkadaha was a shaman. This name then went to Jimmy George, then to Dan Edwell's uncle, Dan Brown Sr., then to my father. I don't know what was going on with the clan mother's mind. Maybe she was wasn't feeling good that day, but she gave it to a white man. And now some family members of that person feel that person is the only one that can have this name and they won't recognize someone who's bloodborn. This was part of the issue of the clan leaders. Who are clan leaders? Can an adopted person ever be recognized as such? How do they get into these positions? And from working with most of these guys for the past 29 years and sitting around them, a lot of them are gone. Personally, I think anybody who wants to be a clan leader is totally out of their mind. Because yeah. <laughs> it's always, why him? Why you? What's he doing? He's not supposed to be there. Take it. So, take it, Edible. Good <laughs> sheesh. <clears throat> My name is Kleakit uh, Uchkida, and uh, before I became the clan leader, house leader in Angoon, I'm from Angoon, Hutsidakwan. Before I became the clan leader, my name was Naska from Angoon, and I received my name Naska from my mother. And I'd, first, I'd like to say thank you to the sponsors that are sponsoring this conference. We, we all sh really appreciate this sharing of knowledge. I mean, this is a great forum to share our knowledge besides when we're in grief or when we're supporting somebody that's in grief. Sometimes that's hard to do when <clears throat> you're in grief and somebody's coming from the interior. I'd like to thank the interior, uh, my brothers and sisters from coming down from the interior. From those of you that traveled outside of Juneau, thank you for coming to this clan conference. I hope you enjoy this trip and I hope you gather a lot of knowledge from what we have to say. And what I have to say is, is, is just from, from my house. And I'm not trying to tell everybody, you know, how they should conduct their business in their house. So this is just from myself. And I'd like to thank the Akwan, the Akwan, 
for uh, hosting the Klan Conference this year here in Juneau. As I mentioned, my lineage comes from my mother. And my mother recently passed away last month, Alice DiCafano. She was Dakhlawadi. And her mother was Dakhlawadi and so forth. So that's like, like Harold said, that's, that's how we are. We're not, I wasn't adopted into the Dakhlawadi. I was born into the Dakhlawadi. And I was born into it because of my uncle. My uncle, my, my mother's brother, Dan Brown Jr. Um, it's a funny story. When I used to come home, I retired military 21 years, and I traveled all over the world. And every time I came back to Juneau, the very first thing my mom would have me do before I even unpacked, had my bags in hand, and she said, you have to go see your uncle. They were in the village, um, and it's the very first thing that they wanted me to do is go see my uncle. And for a long time, I didn't understand that. I didn't really know why. And um, my uncle knew why, and my mom knew why, that um, sooner or later I was going to become the Dakhluwadi Itzati. If I had brothers, then they would also be in line for the position, the killer whale chasing the seal, clan leader. But um, my mom wasn't busy enough. I was the only one. And kind of, I told her, how come you didn't have any more kids? <laughs> Could have had more brothers and sisters. But I was the only one, so. Those before me, becoming a clan leader, there was John Nelson in 1947. This is from Angoon. Robert Jamestown, 1993. Dan Brown in 1996, my uncle. And then myself in 1997. So this is, this is how I, I did, I, like Harold said, I, I wasn't elected into this. It's not where you're the most popular or even the most knowledgeable, because if that were the case, I wouldn't be the clan leader. <laughs> because I spent most of my time in the military traveling around and I would come back so often and and uh, visit home, which is Angoon and Juneau. Now, what happens when you become a clan leader? Well, most common, it's at a memorial party. And in this case, it was my uncle's memorial party in 1997. Um, many attend, and at that time, many did attend, and there were, uh, that was videotaped at the time. And I had um, people come in from all over that I've invited from down south. At the time, I was teaching in New Jersey. And they came up to Alaska to see the confirmation. And there are a couple of people in here that were there. Harold was there. Also. And both sides of the moieties, the eagles and the ravens, partake in this, kind of like a checks and balances, a confirmation. Um, we, you, you just the reason they do that is you just, you just can't have uh, a party for yourself and nobody there to witness it. So they play a part like witnesses when you become the clan leader. So there was about, I think, 300 people there at the time, and uh, clan leaders from all over Southeast, from Sitka, from Juneau, and uh, from other locations, they all came to see the killer whale. And that was me. Property, when I became the clan leader, the killer whale house, the property was, it goes to the next house master. That's just the way it is. This is um, sometimes difficult for family members uh, because, and, and I'm not talking about the atuu that you have or you made for your particular family or your brother or sister. I'm talking about the atuu atuu that was made and that was for the clan leader. That's a different story. That atuu belongs to the clan, period. All the atuu that I have, it's, it's not mine. I'm merely watching over it. And I have an example up here 
uh, referencing like the governor right now. The governor has the governor's mansion. That's not her mansion. And also, she can't sell anything in the mansion. In actuality, the governor's mansion belongs to you. You're owners of the governor's mansion. You're owners of the uh, everything that's inside the governor's mansion. So it's the same same thing with the atu that uh, is, has been passed down for generations and generations. One of the hardest things that Harold had to do several years ago when his father passed away was to pass on the atu which he cared for for his father for such a very long time and that's hard because he feels you know it's it's part of his dad and it was and, and some of you might have been there a couple years ago when we had the clan leaders conference and all the atu was passed over to me from Harold's dad it was very emotional time and uh, he knew that was the right thing to do and when my time comes, it's, it will be the right thing to do. Also, all of the clan property that belongs to the killer will will go to the next house master. That's just, that's just the way it is. That's the way it's supposed to be. Your family members do not inherit clan property. Sarah Palin's kids will not inherit anything in the governor's mansion. That's, it's, it's, it sounds funny, it sounds even ridiculous to think like that. But yet, I hear over and over family members that have possession of clan property. And again, like I said, I'm not talking about something that was made by you or you had made specifically for your son or your daughter. I'm talking about clan property that belongs to the housemaster. That is not willed. It's, it's not willed. It goes to the next hits ati. That's just the way it is. And I want to make sure that you understand that when I leave, then all of my atu does not go to my son. He does not find a lawyer and try to get all the atu from me. Because I think what drives a lot of people is the dollar value of how much the atu is. And in, in some cases, it's priceless. It's irreplaceable. It's been passed down for hundreds of years. So the, the dollar value of the atu is very, very high. And that's in my possession. And I'm the caretaker for all of the atu. And this also includes the the songs that go with the Duck Cloedi. Many times when you're at a memorial party, you should hear people say, I was given permission to sing this song. Because that's, that, that property, the songs belong to a clan. And uh, if, you don't, if you didn't understand it, maybe you'll understand it now. And if you go to, for example, celebration, you'll hear people stand up and they'll say, I'd like to thank, for example, just myself, I'd like to thank Clea Keat Edwell from Duck Lwedi for allowing us to sing this song. Usually, if you're granted to, um, the permission to sing that song, you have a killer whale in your group. Or, or usually you're the grandchild of that killer whale in that group, so then you can sing that song. But um, you have to ask permission. It's not something that you could just pick up and, and sing because you like it. You usually um, pick your songs from your clan house and sing them. Harold mentioned that names from, for are usually reserved, uh, big names are usually reserved for housemasters. And that's the case with me. I received the names Clea Keat and Yitza in 1997 at the memorial party for my uncle Dan Brown Jr. Both my names have been passed down from previous housemasters from Duck Luedi, and I received both of them back in 1997. And just recently, I received the name Wuchkdaha 
about two years ago. What our responsibilities are as clan leaders, Harold said, this is something that maybe you don't want. It's not, it's not always a glamorous position. You, you many times have to go to different communities and many times go to communities where you don't know anybody. And, then, and that costs money too, especially in this time and age where money is, is uh, pretty slim. And just recently from Angoon, we've had about four individuals pass away in the past less than 45 days. So part of our responsibility is to go and, and pay our respects as a clan leader. So. And it's our responsibility to be of good character as a house master, follow clan members with songs, regalia, and history, and to make a good faith showing. We're generally responsible for our clan house and usually do not interfere with other clan houses. This is another one that uh, happens a lot. I do ask for assistance many, many, many times from many of those sitting here um, because I'm, uh, Harold was very fortunate with his father and in that that his father taught him just about er everything he knows and uh, personally I think um, I, I wish I was able to gather all that information but I just wasn't as fortunate I, as I mentioned earlier I was gone for 21 years in the military traveling all over the world and and the the knowledge that I gathered was small so I lean on others for assistance and the way I like to, I, I like to use analogies. I'm a teacher by trade at, for technology. But the, what I, the way I like to, to explain this is uh, interference between clan houses. As, I'll go back to the governor again. <laughs> is she does not go down to Washington and interfere with Washington business. She, she does not say, hey, you're, what are you doing here? That's not the way you're supposed to run things. They would throw her out of Washington. <laughs> it's the same way with our clan leaders. I do not go and tell any one of these men what to do whatsoever. It's, I never have and I never will. That's just the way it is being a clan leader. We're expected to know what we need to do and ask for assistance. That doesn't mean you can't ask. I can't ask. I've asked Andy. I've asked you know Ray and Harold and George Ramos. I've asked them all for assistance. That doesn't mean I can't ask them, but I can't tell them what to do. And my responsibility is to respond with speeches. Uh, many times I respond to the opposite side. We always respond to I'm Eagle, Killer Whale, so I respond to the Ravens, and the Ravens respond to me. That's all. <laughs> I'll add, Edwell is, uh, his father was Deshi Ton, and Edwell's grandfather was Kogwan Ton. His grandfather's name was Dak Tunk. His father's name is Kukatsa. I'll get back to that one. I'm gonna, well, when he was installed, there were those opposites there that recognized it. And I'll tell you, the clan hats that they're in charge of carry a lot of weight. And if they don't show up at your party, there's probably a reason for it, from what I've seen. There was a lot of hats at this party when he was installed as the house master of his house and he was approved by the opposite tribe and they stood there with their hats on. And if you're ever at a party and you see them start putting the hats away or don't have the hats out, something's wrong. Because I saw that at a party one time when they didn't agree with what was going on with someone who was speaking and the hats started disappearing off the tables. Suddenly all the hats were gone off the tables. The guy turned around and looked and he saw what happened. He sat down and he didn't say another word during the rest of the party because he wasn't being recognized. 
I don't know if I'm going to go Eagle Raven or not, but this is the way it's turning out here. Our next, I'm going to have George Ramos speak. I've heard him speak on this before, and he spoke on it on our last trip on how one becomes a clan leader. I'll say something else about this. When this adopted person was given the name, a raven told me, it's none of your business. It's up to us to recognize the person. So what you say doesn't matter. That's true to a point. We liken it to being a notary, putting our stamp of approval on it. But if you're having a paper notarized, it better be the truth what's written on there. And this wasn't truthful when this adopted person was given this name and recognized as a clan leader. And what if, how would they like it if we said, I don't want to recognize your nephew. I'm going to recognize this guy over here instead. And it's up to me as an eagle to recognize that. And then what you says doesn't matter. No, you put the person out and we recognize it. I saw that happen in around 2000 when one of the clan leaders died. Three younger men were chosen to be the spokesman in place of one person. And when uh, two elders of the clan said, we're stepping away from this, we want these three men to represent us, they sat there, stunned. I think it was more like, oh no. But they sat there for a few minutes, and then the eagle side, the wolf side, started responding to them and accepted them in that position. But I'll have George speak next. <laughs> Twas a cook on the cheek, she has a high, ah, shy, hashate, hunky, ah, hakas tea, yo, hachi, duck yonder walk, ah, hayes cart, hay it, okay, no, what are, hash has to die, you are, could you scare? I thank them for being here. We have realized, like I always say, the lady who's come from Huna, she said, our culture is spread on that table like a cloth, and we are holding the very edge of it to keep it from disappearing. And I thank them that they have come forward because of this gathering, and I thank them for allowing me to speak. I have <clears throat> quite a bit of experience because I used to hunt with the old ones, and I call it 880. I was eight, and they were 80. And it's really interesting to listen to them and watch them express and talk about how you train for this position that we have tackled here because it is the one that has held our culture together from time immemorial. But getting into this fast-moving world and the restriction that we served under the missionaries who told us we can't do our dances, our potlatches, and anything with our feet. We had lost part of it. And we have also lost a lot of our language. And so this is what we are trying to emphasize. But you will also know that 
always the uncle used to train in the method of the man who's going to come behind me. And the training was harsh. From the time you were six and a half, seven years old, you went to your uncle. And in them days, there was no excuse. You did as you were told. And a routine set according to the age. I remember the six and seven year olders, as they explained it, as more of a gopher boy. Go for water, go for wood, go run on down the beach. In our area, we have 90 miles of sand beach. And when they learned to work with iron, these young little boys had to run the beach. They call it. Is iron log. And I've always wondered how did they learn how to work with iron? If you find one, you will become a rich man. To use it for an axe, knife, wake. And I think it must have come from the Japanese and it went on a current across the ocean. Everything had a spirit. And when we went down there, we were trying to emphasize to these people who are watching our at Uwu that everything to us is sacred. It has been sacred for generations and generations, and from time immemorial. There is nothing hard to, uh, to understand that. Everything, all the animals, all the trees, the wind, the sun, they all have spirits to us. And the younger people have a harder time understanding that you respect all of it as you respect the other clans, the other family, and the other individual. As long as we don't break each other's law. The housemaster has got a very strict large responsibility. From that corner to that corner is my land. From that mountain to that mountain is my land. From that river to that river is my land. No one comes into my land until I give him permission. That was the number, as one I think about it, is the number one law that we used to carry. The other laws varied from house to house. It depends on the uncle who gets his nephews in the evening and tells them. Can you imagine for thousands of thousands of years these verbal of the creation of our world by the raven was passed on, oral history. I kind of chuckle and laugh to myself when some anthropologist or somebody comes in and asks me, well, can you tell me the history about your people? I think I got about a half an hour how much can you tell him in a half an hour? How much of this? Like they might find a man down here in the cave 10,000 years ago, he was there. You found the man in the ice field 500 years ago. And yet I have heard them people say, well, can you tell it to me? I've got this much time. 
and I always say, we'll, we, we can be here a whole year. And that will be the creation part from the time the ravens started. That'll be the parables that you are going to live by. And they always say, ah, ha ha, that's all the old man has to say. If you are brought up, on, if you grew up from the lap of your grandfathers, and you've been told these stories, you will know exactly what he's saying. Ha 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 ha, What happened is a little bird asked all the birds in our world, come, come, I will teach you how to build a nest. If you come here, I will teach you how to build a nest. And when he does that, they all gathered up around him. And he said, I will teach you now. And he went over and he parted rocks. And a few of them jumped up and says, ha, 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 ha. I know how to build a nest now. After that, he got some sticks and he put it there. And some more of the birds jumped up. Ha, ha I know how to build a nest now. And then he started packing mud in there and forming it. And a lot of the birds got up. Ha, I know how to build a nest now. And then he started building it up and he'd get in there and form it. And some more birds got up and built it. Pretty soon there was two birds sitting there. And he said, I will finish it. And he takes the down from his breast and he puts it on side of the nest and forms it. And he said, it is finished. It is done two birds, and I understand it was a hummingbird, is one. This is the story that is told to young people that are sitting in front of the uncle. You stay until the end of the story. And a lot of times when you're teaching, you'll find that. A lot of the people are thinking of something else. So in my experience, it says 10% does not hear you. And we are talking mainly, and I'm sure that as we go along, you'll see that the young people having a difficult time because they don't know who they are. They don't know what crest came, where their crest came from. They don't know where their land is. Once they learn that, then they're on a road to being understand what it's all about. Too many people learn a small little bit of it and think, well, by gosh, I've got enough to do all of these things. But it doesn't work that way. The Clinkett culture is very, very difficult. But always remember, it's based on the respect from one clan to the other clan, one community to the other community. 
it is uh, when that falls apart, well, we are going to be like this fast-moving world. If anybody gets in our way, we're going to walk over them. That is what's happening. It is very difficult to understand. But if you retain sections, the whole picture starts coming together. And the responsibility of a clan leader is tremendous because he was responsible for the house. He's responsible for the, his, his clan. Like they say, you don't go to tell somebody else's clan. In 1960, they told me, you speak Lincoln really fluently. The history of our clans are fading away. And he told me, you try to learn them, to preserve them, and which I did in some in tape. And it's not supposed to be that way. But in 1960, they realized it, I realized it, and so I did make some of the tapes. It's been used in some areas. But I hope that we understand because we have lost the respect from one clan to the other. It is very difficult to retain that. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Andy Abona, who's the head of the Tena Hit for the Kiksari. But first, there is another group of, I guess you can say, clan leaders. Some of them are sitting out here, the Na Tla, the clan mothers of the various clans. Can you stand up where you are? Those of you who are clan mothers. Not you, Joe. <laughs> Those are from Kogwantan, Dakslawedi, Dakdintan, and Kiksari. Thank you. How many of you watched that movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Doesn't that look like a clinket community? <laughs> okay, in clinket culture, they always say the men are the head, the women don't speak, women this, women that, the men do the speaking, the men do the leading. I saw a line in there that reminded me of a clinket community when the woman told her husband, he may be the head, but I'm the neck, I turn that head where I want it, so. <laughs> I'm not sure why he mentioned my fat Greek wedding before I got up here. Hakahidi tena hit you do a sock. Sheet ka kwan aya khat. Chukanedi dash khank khat siti. Wushkitan dash khank tsu khat siti. My Tlingit name is Kuch An. I'm of the Raven Moati of the Kiksadi clan. Our clan crest is the frog. I belong to the Copper Shield House, of which I am the house leader. I am from the village of Sitka. I am the grandchild of the Chukaneti. I'm also the grandchild of the Wushkitan. I'd like to also mention that my mother's name was Hwuku. Her mother was Shasti. Her mother was Sistan. Her mother was Kashawat. Her mother was Kajik. 
and her mother was Katut. Our family are direct descendants of Shkawishliech, who was uncle to Katlian, both of whom were the key leaders of the Kiksadi in the Battle of Sitka in 1802 and 1804 with the Russians. I was appointed the house leader several years ago of the Copper Shield House um, when the Clay House, of which we are originally members of, had four major families that belonged to the same house. And it was decided by the Kiksadi leaders that one of the houses became empty and there were no descendants in that house any longer. And so I was appointed the house leader of the Tanah Hit. I bring this up primarily to say that the houses evolved over the centuries. The clay house was originally part of the point house, which was one of the four original houses back in the early 1800s. And so it was my mother's 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 time when the clay house was created under the uh, point house and became a house unto itself uh, by uh, the Kiksadi leaders at that time. And so that's a point that we need to keep in mind that the houses are not static. They don't stay, you, do, you, you don't have to stay in one house. If one becomes too crowded with too many families, then a house can be created with another name which is how I came to be, uh, the house leader of the Tanah Hit. I represent uh, Ray Wilson, Anyanach, who is the house leader, uh, or who is the clan leader for the Kiksadi. You may have heard, heard earlier today that he had to travel to Angoon to participate in the funeral services for Lydia George of the Day Shitan. It is very important, I try to adhere to it, to attend as many activities with the clan leader as possible. As house leader, that is our responsibility, as was pointed out earlier today, that we have to represent our house, we have to respond back to the opposite clans whenever there is something going on. And so I know that there are several other house leaders among our clan that are just there in name only, but that is not the way it, that it's supposed to be. We have to be involved in the cultural activities of our clan and of our house to be responsible house leaders, to care not only for our heritage and our songs, but also to be responsible, to be able to respond to the opposite side. So that is what I wanted to bring forward today. I wanna to thank all of the house leaders and clan leaders that are here today, and thank you for allowing me to share some of my thoughts today. Gunachish. One of our leaders we have here is from Teslin. He's from the Kukitan. His name is Jimmy Johnston. His Clinkett name is Kuduat. Good afternoon, each and every one of you. I'm very thankful to be up here today. Kukitan. Yeah, 
and which is real good for us, for all our people and our young people that come in behind us. They are the ones that are going to be here when we're not here. And we make the trail for them and real good. There's lots of things that have been set here and well, some of them, is, and I have a little bit hard to understand, but I do when I think of it, and which is sometimes a little hard for me. But as for to be a clan leader in our way in the Yukon, we don't just get up there and we said, okay, I'm going to be the clan leader now. I'm your master. No, we don't. The clan on their side, my side, they're the one that talk. And they go by the words, the way a person talk, to what, whichever way that he understand, and I'll think it ways. Kugay <laughs> The whole world was doing I <laughs> Ada <laughs> I 
Our next speaker is going to be my older brother. I had a dream about him last night. I dreamt we had died and gone to heaven, and we were standing outside the pearly gate, but the window was up real high. We couldn't see in, so I told Ray, let me get on your shoulders and see if anybody's there. So I knocked on the door, and the little window opened up. St. Peter looked out. Ray was getting wobbly with me on his shoulders. I said, can we come in? St. Peter looked at me, looked down, said, yeah, you can come in, but you got to leave your horse outside. Ray and I are duck slow eighty children, so I can pick on him. Ray is going to speak next. He's the head of the Raven House.
Gönnes Tschüss, ach Kik. Ach ich has, dach so idee. Ach at has, dach so scha. Na klar, dach so scha. Ach ich, ach ich ge has. Uh, pardon me, I got a back up one line. Ach ich, ach kann ich an. Chukanedi Achishka has Teko Edi Achishka has Kaguantan Goodness Chish Duani Akwan Wishkitan Whiskey Town sounded like Slenedi. One of the things as a house leader that is very, very important. Is being very watchful of what comes across right here. Me off. <clears throat> this this raven has tricks up his sleeves that are just now coming out. One of the most important things that we these gentlemen that are here, many that are out taking care of business today, is being watchful over what comes through this porthole, what comes across this tongue. But when we speak a word out into existence, there is no way to pull it back. Once it's out there, it's there no matter how much you apologize for it. As a young man in my clan, learning possibly the same way my older brother George had learned from his uncles, I must have been really, really misbehaving, so they sent me early to all of my uncles. About five years old, all my uncles that were alive and on board my grandfather's boat, that's where I lived from May until September. As I mentioned before, the first job that I had was to simply stay out of the way. The second thing I had to learn was that I didn't have anything to say yet because I was watching what they were doing. They showed where to get the food. They showed how to prepare the food. They showed how to provide for a family. All of these men that are up here all have had similar stories. As I look at the line of which I follow, they too had the same. The man that I stand instead of, Takasat. His English name is Austin Hammond. He stood in this robe before I did. I merely just take care of it. He mentioned to us, men, if you have something important to say, you need to put this on. Today, it's on these young man's shoulders. It is like all of my ancestors have now become a part of the voice that is now speaking. Each of these men that are here 
That is the way all of us feel. We don't represent our own benefit. We don't necessarily act up out of order. For this vessel that is speaking, this young man, he keeps his body as pure as can be, meaning no alcohol or fermented item enters this body. No smoke enters this body. The reason being, as a house leader, I have to pray for every single member of my clan. I get that opportunity to talk with the one that created us. Many times, it feels like you're all alone. That's part of that, that statement that came out earlier. If you want to be the head man, you just don't know what you're asking for. It's true the responsibilities that we have is to address to the opposites. As we heard from my father's clan, the Dakhloedi, oftentimes we're addressing each other in public. Many of us ravens that are here will stand alongside of each other. In my clan, we have one house left that is still being lived in and that is still alive and it is called the Raven House. I would ask if those of you that are here that are Shukahari to stand up. As you see, not many of us stood up. Inside the Raven House in Haines, we have incorporated our other houses from the different areas of where we lived, whether it was from Katwash 2 at 19 Mile, the two-door house, which was moved down to the four-mile village of Yendeslachia. There at Yendeslachia, we had a few other houses. We had the Gay Sun Hit, we had the Red Sockeye, house over the creek, When we moved the house from the four mile village into the existing place, all of these houses became incorporated into it. We had other houses that were in the area. Out at Chilkut, we had Shah Hit. At Tanani, we had Kushta Hit. Those are incorporated into the Raven House. We also have in our clan, because of our history, one of the things that many of our, our men that are here all have is that history of where their clan comes from. The original name that we have, other than Shuka Khadi, is Tashkwaidi. We migrated from the Stikine area northward. When we came to a certain point, some of us went to the coast, some of us wound up in the Chilkat Valley. Those of us that ended up in the coast were at Dry Bay. We have a house there called Shakahit. I'm sure glad my memory sounds just like my Aunt Nora. <laughs> that house also is incorporated into the Raven House. We Khadi. We love our people. 
We love our heritage. We love our, our families. In our clan, if we looked around this room as I am now, I can just about tell you how we're all related. With these incorporations of all of the clan into one house, we have an awesome responsibility as a clan leader, a house leader, to take care of what we've been gifted by our ancestors. It's not so we can look pretty or to get any kind of acquired fame. These are the things that none of these men nor this speaker seeks after. These things we carry in our heart is from the training we received when we were younger. It brings me back to the line of my house. The one that was just before my uncle Austin was my grandfather's older brother, Bert Dennis, on Kadetsin. He had a short tenure there. Just before him was John Mark Sunat, one of my one of my namesakes. It was mentioned earlier that some of the big names that are given to individuals are just reserved for those that are the house leaders or the clan leaders. And this is the way it should be. Because when we look around, we know each other by face those of us that are house leaders, clan leaders, we gather from time to time and we contemplate all the things that we Tlingit people are doing. But these names that we, hear, we have, we guard them like a precious jewel. I cannot remember the individual, the man that, that used this analogy. We Tlingit people are like a crystal ball. We've got to take care of it. That's what these men do for their respective clans. There's nothing we can do to change that crystal ball. This is the gift that God has given to us Tlingit people. This is the way we have been taught to live. We that are house leaders, we that are clan leaders, we live in an environment as if we're in a glass house. That's why this young man is very careful as to where he's seen, what he puts into his body, what he says and even how he receives it, even though his little brother picks on him. I believe that our relationships from one clan to another are very, very, very highly guarded. One of the most important things that we have as a clan leader is to remember all those that are closely related to us. I wonder if I can do that just for a moment. I had seen our grandchild walk in and stand up against the wall. 
I would ask that someone bring a chair so he can sit amongst us for King Gets Stay. Bring him up amongst us. As a, a house leader, it's important that sometime we have to show example. We have to. I need to change that phrase. We get to. We get to show how we can love each other. We get to show how much respect we can give one to another. I've had the privilege of being spoiled rotten to have my uncles, to have my aunt and my mother and their mother and their aunts as I was growing up. As you can see, I've gotten about as tall as I can be, so now I'm growing out. It's always good to, to hear laughter. In the days that we live in now, it's, it's very difficult times. But we have each other, and we can cause each other to have a smile on their face. Sometimes that's, that's the best that this little raven can do. Many of us are enduring our hardships. Yet there are times when we have to stand up. We have to say a few words. And once again, as, as we say these words, we share it in love. And we're very cautious as to what we're going to say. because of our care and appreciation for our family. That is the way this little raven feels about all of you that are here. You're, you're my family. I'm a part of you. Wherever this person walks, I know that I'm not only representing my clan, but I'm representing our people. That's how this little raven as a house leader looks at his responsibilities. Very guarded, very careful. That's how I was spoiled. That is how my relatives have taught me. That is the way we should be with each other. Now for a commercial, for those of you that aren't doing anything on May 23rd, I'm inviting you to come up to Haynes. In Haynes, you're going to see something happen that doesn't happen too often. You get to see two countries unite. You'll get to see a trail reopened. You'll also get to see one of the prettiest killer whales walk towards the Raven House to take this young man's hand. So you're invited to my wedding. I'll take hundreds, I'll take five hundreds. <laughs> They're not gonna go in my pocket because 
like I said yesterday, I know which side my toast is buttered on. <clears throat> As you see, you have seen different styles of speaking so far from all of our house leaders. Each one of us, we take our responsibility very serious. It's, it's not just a job. It really is an adventure. It's one that we all get to share. We who are Shingit, no matter which house you come from, no matter which clan you come from, whether you say A at the end of your, your sentence or not, you as a clan member, if your clan member of some of these house leaders, make them look as good as possible. Lift them up, hold them in the stature that they deserve. Because where the law of our people is found is within the minds of these men. At our parties, the Kuih, that's where it's enacted. Not a one of us has stepped forward on our own accord or was voted in. It was done at a party where you're named to where you're going to be. My little journey started in September of 1996 where I was named to live in the house called the Raven House, Yesh Hit. It seems like it just began. Many of us that are house leaders wish we could have our elders to be right next to us all the way. What we do as a Tlingit tribal leader is to imitate our ancestors. And that's what we get to do. Whichever place it is that we have in our house, we imitate the lives of our ancestors. I thank you for your time. And I thank these big men that are up here To sit amongst you is an honor. This little raven is very proud to be a part of this panel. This little raven is very proud of each of you who has come here today. This little raven is very glad that his future in-laws decided to sit on the front table. They can stand, we can give them a hand. They're from Carcross. <laughs> Had my sweetie known that they were coming down, I'm sure she would have jumped in somebody's car and I probably wouldn't be here. That's just me. Being all in all honesty, I stand only for the love of our Tlingit people. That is the way it is with this little raven. A tlein gunnach chish. Yewa. Gunnach chish. Oh.
Good to hear all the big men. Now can we have all the big women stand up? <laughs> no woman is standing up. <laughs> I know we're running a little over time here. Please excuse us. We have to keep moving on this. There's one other thing that's real important we have to do here. I think the phrase in Klinkit is wuchas atas. They carry the same weight. There's nobody sitting there who is saying they're above the other person. I've heard one person who tries to be a clan leader say, we speak first because we're above everybody else. And, mm. You know how that hits at you when somebody says that? But none of these guys have ever said that or done that. And they're sitting together in equal weight here today. <clears throat> The these men are caretakers of some very precious items, our artifacts that some of them talked about earlier. I heard somebody say that, well, somebody commented about alcoholism among Native people and commented about it was because of the loss of the artifacts, and somebody wrote a letter to the paper that said it can't be that because... You can't blame it on losing those things. When these objects are brought out, they're used to comfort the opposite tribe. We see our father's emblems. We see our grandfather's emblems. I'm not talking about personal items that people hang up in front of you. I'm talking about things that your father had or your grandfather or your uncles had. And I know every time I see the objects my father had, I see my father's coming out. They're not toys. They're not objects you bring out every day. They're not items you wear every day. They're not pieces you hang on the wall like art. They're not art, they're our history. They're who we are, they're our uncles. And these, a lot of these men have these objects in their possession. But when you have somebody that's adopted into a clan and they're acting like a clan leader and they hang on to clan objects and they hold parties and they give away clinket names like they're theirs, and they use songs like they're theirs, and they dedicate crest objects like they're theirs. That has to stop. This happened to my father's clan, and I know who my fathers are. My fathers are Dukhtlawadi. There may be some people who are adopted into the Dukhtlawadi, and a number of them help. They break their backs at parties, they contribute, they work, they donate. But most of them have never tried to step into the position of my father. Nobody, none of them, most of them have tried not to step into the position of a clan leader. I'll mention this again. A lot of you read my letter that said shattered when I wrote that in December. If you want a copy of it, I'll be glad to give it to you. Just give me your email address. I'll send it to you. But at that time, I decided I could not bring out our artifacts anymore. I heard somebody say that these items are too precious. Bob, could you put the black box up here on the table? Right here. Edwell, come up here. You want to say something? Dorothy, are you in here? Joe, can you get some ravens to help you with those? I remember when my grandfather had a Chilcat shirt and he didn't want to sell it, and for about a year and a half he resisted selling it, and then one day I went down to ask to use it for something, and they said I could use my grandfather's objects, and he had sold it three days before. That shirt is back now, and I can now use it. It's shrunk since the last time I saw it, no longer fits. <laughs> But here today I have our wolf hat. And over here there's some Wushkiton objects, their hats. Bob, can you roll the other trunk out here? Don't open it, don't open it.
these have been sealed up for the past four months. And what I have to say is, you've heard the clan leaders speak here today. House masters, men who are in charge of artifacts and houses and lineages and clan names and songs. This box here contains almost every item that my father was in charge of. But I'm just going to talk about this box that has our hat in it. If adopted people and people who are not Clinket are going to be recognized as clan leaders, who are going to be recognized as parties and think they can run parties and overstep the bounds of men who are born into these positions, I don't want my hat out anymore because I don't want the words falling to the ground. I want to see my father's objects. I want to. <clears throat> I want to see my grandfather's objects. I know the lineages. I know who they're connected to. I know how they're connected to me. You don't know what it's like when I'm crying and my grandfather stands in front of me. And when you're crying, how I want to bring our things out and talk to you. But we've lost so much with our language and things. We've lost our land. We had to go through clan land claims. We've lost language. Are we going to lose our house leaders next? Are we going to lose our clan leaders to adopted people? Are we going to let it happen? You know this happened in England. They have the House of Commons and the House of the Lords. The commoners who are elected in positions and everyday people and the House of Lords who are people who are born into their positions. And bit by bit the commoners destroyed the House of Lords to where they mean absolutely nothing. But these guys still mean something to me. I know who the clan leaders are. I know who the house masters are. You can see them sitting here. But it has to be decided. Who's going to be recognized? Adopted people? Or are we going to hang on to our culture and let this be the people who are born into these positions? My mother's mother's mother was Stung Quaid. He was one of the caretakers of this hat. I have a picture of him wearing it. And this also happened with my father. That. Hurt me more than anything. The caretaker of these Wushkitan artifacts has also decided the same things, that they're not going to come out until it's decided. Who's going to be recognized? People born into these positions? Or are we just going to make it up and let it go now? in this trunk before you stuck the way the at ooh it's been passed down generation to generation I'm charged 
to caretake for it. My name has been passed down from generation to generation. I'm charged to caretake for that too. The songs that we sing, Duxlo AD songs, have been passed down from generation to generation. And I'm charged to take care of that too. I think what happens in this clan conference hopefully can clear up what is happening and what has happened is that maybe they're just not aware of what's going on. I would like this atuu to remain in my possession until I pass it on for another 100 years or 200 years. This is a statement I have to make because sooner or later what other people are saying that have not followed the history through bloodline for the past 100, 200, 300 years, sooner or later people are going to start to believe it. And I would like that to stop. It's mentioned many times here, the stories that, were, that have been told through the generations and generations. How would you like it if your story with your family was picked up by someone else? And they told your story, your family, and started making up things as they went along. I think you would be pretty mad. I have to be careful. What Ray Wilson talked about, what comes out of my mouth. But this is too precious to me and to my clan to not say anything. It's too precious to all of these men here. Their regalia, their atu, their songs. Ray talked about generations of his songs. George talked about generations of his stories told down the line. Hopefully you get the picture now of where sometimes we have to stand and say this has got to stop. We can't have people that have not been born into this telling stories, giving away names, and holding parties. It's like if your mother passed away and someone else decided to have her party for you. How would you feel? If something happened to your son or daughter and someone else, not even related to you through blood, had a party for your son or daughter. It would hurt you. On one hand, you would cry. On the other hand, you would be angry. That's how I feel about my atu that has been passed down through the generations. 
On one hand, I'm saddened. And on one hand, I have to make a stand. I hope you understand how important this is to all of us, our atu. Without this, I'm nothing. I was born into this. I wasn't elected. I wasn't adopted. I wasn't appointed by an election. That's not the way our Tlingit people handle things. I don't mean no disrespect to anybody. But I think this has to be said because it's too important to the Duck Tlawedi for it not to be said. Ganesh Chish. And also for our hat. So that's where it stands. If you want to go to parties and recognize adopted people, I'm not opening the box anymore. You can go to adopted people for comfort. Anyone that wants to uh, go to them, let them bring out their objects. But I can't let the words fall on this hat of my uncle's anymore. And the only way it can come out is for the legitimate clan leaders to be recognized for who they are. People who are born into these positions and no adopted people. And that's the way it has to stand. That box is sealed and that box is sealed. But if people want to recognize their clan leaders that are caretakers of these, or the people that are in care of them, and see them out at parties anymore, then it has to be opened up. But we just can't do it ourselves. Yeah, oh, uh. I have a question. A very excellent stuff. My children are adopted. Where does that put them? What clan are you? Duck Dane Tan. So they're Duck Dane Tan Yetke. And you are saying you're not recognizing them? I didn't say that. They cannot be clan leaders. Thank you. I have nieces and nephews that are, their mothers are white. They're Yanye Di Yatke. They will always be Yanye Di Yatke. They will always be Dakhtlawe Di and Deshitan grandchildren. They will always have the right to wear their grandfather's crests. They will always be able to dance to their father's songs when their father's clan is called out. But they cannot be clan leaders. Gunachish, Gunachish, and Yakusani, Adia Yi Dukunya, Yayi Gi Choya, Awe, Achish Han, Achish Haskut, who are good, the Yahawe, Achtundatani Yeti, Yayi Gi Noble children of the earth. It's as if I have walked among my father's kinsmen today, those of you that are gone, Achtadi. So achlish go has lukach adi. Gunas chish, gunas chish yada khoskaini. Those of the Raven Sakai clan from the Raven house in Haines. Achlish go eh, gunha kuakan you do wasa. My grandfather was named gunha kuakan from the Raven house in, in Haines. 
Atrawe Sukar Adi Tatran Hatsiki Ach ich gar nach Tedich wusste je gar nach Tedi Yadi Ayachat. A it Tachawe Achla Dachdain Tan Du siehst go Hasrositi Atrawe Ach klar, schließt du hast, dach dein Tan, krass ich dich. Gönnest schieß, dach dein Tan, gönnest schieß, an Jadku, ach, gönnest schieß. Je, aber ach, tunde, jad Tan, jad dich. Ach, ich dachte, ko aß, aber, kicks ad dich, ach, da kann du guck, was ich dich. Gönnest schieß, kicks ad dich, gönnest schieß. Ach, kack, du kann ich anschluck nach ad dich, was ich dich. Gunnas chis lok nach ati. Zu je awa achina kautli di kach ish. De shi taan awa. Zu ach ish has chasiti. My father told me that the de shi taan were also my father's kinsmen. And so I say thank you to the de shi taan. And I also said that my uncle, my grandfather, really is my grandfather, Joseph A. White, was married to the Koho woman from the Koho clan. Thank you, Koho people. All ravens here today. Thank you so much. What you're hearing from me right now is the way my grandparents, my uncles, and others taught me as a traditional person in authority within my clan to talk to the people because we wanted to respect, honor, and uphold all people. This is the way our culture is. This is the way our heritage is. You're to love one another. To love each other. What does that mean? It means just like the light is shining on me right now. is the same way my spirit is beaming over my ancestry. Not because of any other reason that I am a Shlinget Shangukedi Ayachat Shangukedi Takistana Takhlawedi Tatshan. I'm a grandchild of the killer whales. And when there were parties a long time ago, my grandfather Kiti Shanki, the Watts, and others of the Koho Killer Whale clan would put a headdress on me. They'd put their atu on me. They never wore it. They were proud of their grandchild. And they would make me dance or ask me to dance for everyone. This is just a little bit of what I know about having a position of responsibility. A position of responsibility is a great responsibility because it has an impact on who we are, where we're from. They would say, watch the way you talk. Watch what you say. There's life in death in what you say. This is clan stuff I'm telling you. I don't have a doctorate's degree. I don't have a, a PowerPoint presentation to give you. But what I'm giving you, I want you to know, and I say this with all humble humility, what I'm giving to you is what I heard Fritz Willard say 
It's what I heard James Lenot say. It's what I heard Austin Hammond say. It's what I heard Paul Henry say. That's what I heard different ones, uh, Charlie Joseph say, Jimmy George, and the list can go on, and Harold's, Harold's dad. Hey, gosh, think it that way. Real thing it. Being able to forgive, being able to turn the other cheek to go the extra mile, sounds like a biblical stuff, doesn't it? But that's the way our culture is. That's the way our culture is. That's really being clan. That's being a clan. To allow somebody to be who they are. To let somebody to be just who they are. And it's okay. It's pretty tough in these days. So thank you, Harold, and thank you, leaders, for allowing me to say a little bit of words. I can go on and on and on. But I wanted to not let my voice not be heard on my grandparents' land. That's a shlukahadi song. Let my voice ring on my grandfather's land. This is what I have to say, and thank you very much, noble leaders. Gunashish, gunashish, ho ho. I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments, but I think we'll close this and move out to the lobby and let the other group come in here. I was hoping these boxes would have been opened. Hey. This child of the Dukhlawedi, this grandchild of the Chukanedi, this grandchild of the Chukachadi, being a house leader, I have seen today and witnessed one of my fathers cry to us today, they cannot open their box on their own. Being a child of the Dukhlawedi, I cannot stand by and let this happen. I want to see my fathers. I want to see them. If there are any children of the Duklo AD, can you please stand? Ach ish. Ach ish low key. Your child's going to open your box for you. I know who you are. I know your people. I love my fathers. my fathers. I see my father's people. 
Good of Chief for letting me open this box for you. Good of Chief for letting me show you that your child loves you. Good of Chief. Just wanted to uh, make mention for the panel who is following this session, uh, beg your indulgence and uh, support. This is an important uh, clan doings right now. And we don't want to make you feel bad or that you know, we're trying to take up extra time. But when something of this nature is as important as it is, we just uh, hope that you understand and ask for your support. Wanted to uh, thank the clan leaders for having trust in us to share something that is sensitive, but yet is important. I know uh, Brother Andy would never have stood in the way of something like this because this is what the clan conference is about. Knakshish. 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 I think we can close this down. I was hoping all the boxes would be open, but Hello. Good afternoon, Dr. Lawadi. The Kiksadi too cannot stand by and bear to see what is happening. With your permission, we too would like to open one of your boxes. The Kiksadi, uh, we understand the Dakhlawedi box is now open, but we have the Wushkitan boxes. I am ch grandchild of the Wushkitan. So we stand with the Klukahadi in their position, but we too would like to see our grandfathers at Uwu. We would like to open their box.
Clay Akeed. You are my true grandfather. We need you among us. As a Clinton AD, I am so proud to know you as my grandfather. Don't close these boxes up. Wear them with pride. We will stand with you and support you in all that you do. And those of you who are Wushkitan, without you, there cannot be Akwan, the Wushkitan and the Clinady stand together. It is when we are together we make up the Aquan. Don't close these boxes. It's for the people. We are so proud to stand with you. This is so important. It's for us to go into the future. There's reasons why these are still with us. So we will stand with you always. Ganeshtish. I think this session is closing. Three of the four boxes have been closed. I guess we'll leave with our wolf hat sealed. I hope this was a sharing of knowledge conference and I hope these clan leaders' words won't go unnoticed or unlistened to or not listened to or ignored. Our clan leaders are important. We need every one of them. They talk for us, they speak for us, they hold on to these objects for us. Some of the people that hang on to these, like me, are not a clan leader, but I still have them in my possession, and I guard them in its history. So I thank you for coming here. I know this was a very different session. It went another direction. You heard a lot. We got to meet a number of clan leaders. I, if you have any questions or comments, you can kill me when I get outside the doors out here. You who are Ravenside, we need this man. I don't want him to close his box. Help me open it for him. The young Yehdi, we need them.
I remember an old man named Jana Stuck telling me a story about a party that was happening here in Juno. And somebody put on a hat that wasn't supposed to be wearing that hat. The caretaker had his back turned and When the caretaker turned around and saw that hat on the head of a person that wasn't supposed to be wearing it, he took the hat off and put it on the ground and shattered it, smashed it. Because they're not toys. Our clan leaders carry a big responsibility. And as for me, I know your positions and I will always acknowledge you. I'm so glad you came here today. For your words, your teaching, and for keeping the boxes open the boxes holding our at u the boxes holding at uheni the box of wisdom and knowledge that we talk about so much i think we can all thank them for their input today kanachish I'll have Ed Coons close us with a prayer for this session. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us today. We surely did feel your love. What a privilege we have, precious Lord, to come to you with all that is in our heart. We ask you to remain with us for the rest of the day. Be with each of our leaders up here. Be with each of the members of the audience who were here to stand by us. We ask these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen.